Groundbreaking research in South Africa finds that the COVID-19 variant first discovered in the country provides immunity from, from the previous variants and possibly more others. We speak to the researchers behind this finding. Then a joint panel discussion hosted by the SABC and the China's CGTN featuring the WHO, Africa's CDC and China's CDC. All that coming up a bit later on. Good evening, I'm Aldrin Simpia and this is African Perspective. South Africa continues to excel in the research on COVID-19. Today, Health Minister Dr. Zulim Kiz announced the latest developments on the COVID-19 variant that was detected in South Africa. Today, we are joined by Sandy Lekela, PhD student at the Africa Health Research Institution. And also, we're joined by Professor Kolega Mlisani from the National Health Laboratories, who joins us for this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Prof, I was interrupting you a bit earlier on as we were testing, and I I'd like that moment to play out here live on air as you were congratulating Sandile as well. <laughs> Hi, Prof. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, no, I, I was saying that I was in, I interrupted that uh, special moment. And now that okay. we have thousands and thousands of people watching, we, we, we'd rather oh. have a replay of it. <laughs> So what was your message to Sandile <laughs> earlier on? Oh, my goodness. I was just saying, you know, uh, great. I'm actually excited. I wasn't even aware that she's joining, you know, uh, the, the, the interview. And I was saying to him, we are so, so proud of you, Sandile. Well done. This is your stage. I mean, you are the one, you are the man behind the brains. We are just presenting. And I mean, some of us are aging now. So it's your turn. Congratulations and well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. <laughs> Sandile, how, how, how does that make you feel, though? I am really excited. Uh, you know that uh, your work being recognized, uh, it's, a, it's, it's really exciting because we've been uh, working really hard, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how, how did it start all for you, Sandile? Let's start off with you before we go into the research and the findings of the research. How did it start off? Yeah. Uh, for me, as you've mentioned, I'm a PhD student, so this is part of my uh, my work. So uh, I started early around June, July, to look at different variants, like your earlier variants. So when this 501YV2 came about around November, late November, early December, uh, we got a sample from uh, Prof. Tulio who is heading the genomic surveillance team. He came to me and said, we have this sample, can you then now try to outgrow this in the lab so that you can better understand it. So that's where it all started. And then we've been working from there. You've been working very hard from there. Actually, Dr. Alex Siegel saying that um, he likens you to the 1975 Nobel laureate and virologist David uh, Baltimore. Are you beaming there? <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, David Baltimore actually trained Dr. Alex Sigal, and in turn, Alex Sigal is now training me. So in that way, we are somehow connected. Yeah. Uh, Pro Prof, how does that make you feel as well? Um, because here you have Sandile, and he comes from an institution <laughs> that you are also part of. Yeah, I really, it makes me so proud, as you could uh, pick up from, you know, how I introduced myself to him. And I think even more, you know, just beyond, you know, UK and the University of Kosovo Natal, just for the country as a whole, I mean, for us to have a young black South African doing such great research. And just earlier on, uh, I was chatting to Tulia and we're saying, we're hoping that, you know, the these findings are going to excite all other young South Africans to actually be interested in science. Yeah. So really, this is a great moment. Thank you. Well, definitely. And I'm excited to have both of you actually as panelists for this conversation. Um, we have a black woman and we have a black man. And thank you so much for all the work that you've done. Congratulations to both of you and the rest of the team that has been part of this research as well.
Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, Prof, let's then start off with um, the work that was started around um, looking into this new variant. Um, the work that was started last year, Sandile is saying, starting right about uh, July. What is it that you then discovered um, that has brought us to the point that we are at at the moment? Okay, th thank you for that. And, and really, I think what I want to acknowledge up front is that this really has been work of South Africans, South African scientists really coming together and um, contributing their expertise into all of this. So what happened is that when, earlier on in the, epi in the pandemic, you know, South Africans will remember that we had outbreaks in KZN, and this where there was one actually that was in, the priv in a private uh, hospital. Now, what happened is that the laboratory, the NHLS lab in KZN, which is the academic virology lab headed by Dr. Nokkanya uh, Mdlalose and Somi, they then submitted, took all those samples, and those samples that came from that outbreak were submitted to Professor Tulio's laboratory for genomic analysis. Mm -hmm. As a result, you know, they were able to quickly define the kind of the virus that was circulating and they were able to define, you know, that outbreak very quickly. Subsequent to that, then we established, you know, a, a, a system whereby the laboratories at NHLS labs would actually submit positive samples that were randomly selected, representing all, almost all districts within the country. And these labs include, you know, the one in, in KZN, as I've mentioned, mm -hmm. also in, 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 in the Western Cape, Krotoskir and Tigerberg in Bloemfontein, there's Universitas, and in Johannesburg, there's the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. So all those labs have actually been picking up samples that are positive, submitting it to the lab for genomic analysis. As a result, we're able to track, you know, this, uh, the, 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 the virus and how it was behaving yeah. because these are submitted weekly, they are genomic analyzed every week, closer to the you know um, to the date of collection as possible. So that's why around December we were able to pick up that we are identifying a new variant. Mm -hmm. It was because of all those samples that were coming through, sure. and that's actually what then you know became Sandile's work. And then Sandile, there is now the um, the finding that is also made that um, this particular variant. Um, provide some sort of immunity to the previous variant, the original variant? Yeah, uh, at last we have some uh, positive uh, news to, <laughs> to share with the country. Because we know that the, the antibodies from the earlier variants could not uh, recognize the new variant very well. However, when we tested the antibodies from people infected with the new variant, it could recognize both the new variant and the earlier variants, which is quite uh, good for us. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what, what does this mean then about um, the vaccine programs and looking at some of the development of the vaccine, Sandile? And I'm asking this also on the basis of what was said by um, um, Dr. Foshi, that the recent, the recent study found that COVID-19 treatments uh, may not be as effective against the new variant discovered in New York. He's speaking about the one in New York, but what does this mean for the vaccines that are already on the market and already being rolled out? Uh, we know that the uh, big pharmaceutical companies are looking to see how their vaccines work against the new variant. I hope they are doing this so that maybe they can improve on the existing vaccines. If they can get it to recognize the new variant, we know it can also protect against the earlier variants. Yeah. So, so Prof, then, with, 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 the, with, the, with the vaccines that are currently on the market, does this then mean that people who have already been vaccinated, that unfortunately they are not protected um, against this new variant, the V01YV2 variant? No, no, no. R remember the basis on which we actually allowed the currently, you know, vaccine that's being rolled out with the Johnson & Johnson. It is because it showed good efficacy against the new variant. Yeah. So we do know that the current vaccine that's being rolled out, it works against the new variant. Yeah. Now, the, the added advantage of these findings is that it means the immune system from those infected with the new variant is wider 
and protects not just against the variant, but other viruses, as Sandler has already said. Now, which then goes back to what he was saying. It therefore means, you know, going forward, we need to make sure that the vaccines that are developed are vaccines that are going to work yeah. against this new variant uh, so, so that we can produce a broader immune response. Uh, sure, but my, but my question is for countries that would have already rolled out um, vaccines, those have already started yeah. with the inoculation, is based on the original variant, right? Um, but now that we have this new variant, does this then mean that those countries that have inoculated those people, that those people aren't really immune um, to the new variant? Um, we probably will need to explore that, uh, Aldrin, because at the moment, um, for the countries that have got a variant similar to South Africa, then the answer is that it's good news in that the, if they get infected, they will be protected. But then for countries which have not yet mm -hmm. you know, been infected by the new variant, the question that then is going to come is whether the vaccines that have been used for those individuals yeah. do cover the variant or not. Okay. And so I think that's, that, that then is just going to be the challenge for us to explore and see you know, how much um, coverage yeah. is there for the variant. Should they be exposed to the variant? Okay. Sandile, just quickly then, in conclusion, for you, um, 32 years old, um, what has this experience been like um, as, as we conclude the conversation? And how difficult is it doing some of this work? And are you able to tell us whether we could expect any new mutations of um, this virus? Uh, just to correct you, there, I've recently turned 33. Oh, so I'm a three year old man now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, turning 30, I'm turning 33 on Sunday, so <laughs> seen down. <huh? laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, for, for me, like working hard in a lab, it's not something new. I've, I've, I've been employed at uh, R for six years working with HIV. Sometimes we'll do uh, an experiment for a month. And we'd have to come in every second day. That means like every weekend we have got to be there. So working hard uh, is something that I'm used to. So when this opportunity came, and I, I just went for it. Mm -hmm. And from the research that you've done, are you able to tell us at all whether we should be expecting any further mutations of this uh, particular variant? Uh, from what I've done so far, I, I cannot tell. But we'll see. There are some other experiments that we're working on. But for now, just that's it. I cannot answer really on that. Hopefully, you'll get to call me some other time and then we'll discuss this further. Is that is, is a scientist's way of saying no comment? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Prof, just quickly then, in conclusion, on your end as well, um, funding towards research of this nature, how important is that? And what would your call be to the private sector and also to various governments who are listening into this conversation? Yeah, no, 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 that is very critical. And in fact, I think this just highlights the importance of doing collaborative research as well and, um, and also encouraging the young generation to actually be you know, in the forefront and to make sure that this uh, such research is well funded. And there's been a lot of support, I must say, from the South African uh, government, as well as other funding agencies within the country. So really, we just need to get in. And we have just shown the South Africans that actually we can be right there on the cutting edge of, of, of research. So going forward, I would really encourage that all the other countries, I mean, at the end of the day, we don't know how many other variants are to come. Yeah. And we need to be ready. And I think what this work is showing us is that we've got all the tools to be ready for the next change. Should there be more mutations, we actually have a step ahead to be able to get to these answers much quicker than before. Well, Thank Prof, it, it seems that um, STEM is, uh, is trending. <laughs> and encouraging just young people to take on those STEM subjects. Definitely, definitely. That's the way to go as a country. I mean, we need to raise scientists that understand the, 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 the country and mm -hmm. that understand the disease profile of the country. And that's yep. the way to actually bring answers to some of our healthcare issues. And Sandile, I guess you would echo that as well. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we need to get more uh, youngsters involved.
get more youngsters involved. I know that I've been saying a final question, final questions, but as we're having this conversation, <laughs> more and more questions are coming. Sandile, just quickly, a story that we ran on the SABC earlier on about um, vaccines that are being found to be fake that are now doing their ways into different communities. Just a quick warning from your end, and then we'll get the prof also to speak quickly on that. Uh, actually, I've had a really long day today. I haven't looked at the news. I've been in the lab all day long. I even missed the, me- the media briefing, so <laughs> I wouldn't really comment on that. Okay. <laughs> Prof? Yes, actually, we're looking for Sandile High and Low during the minister's uh, 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 webinar. Um, the, the, the good thing with our country is that government has decided that they will be the sole, you know, um, procurer of vaccines. And this is actually exactly to avoid such. And so my message to South Africans is that they must not look at any other vaccines except what comes from the Department of Health, because it is the Department of Health that is actually securing vaccines for the country, which then will be distributed to both the private and the public sector. And let's just focus on that. Well, Professor Kolega Mnisane, as well as Sandile Kdele, once again, congratulations and thank you so much for making time for us. And all the best with all the other research that you're busy with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.